QR codes, they are everywhere. In the next few minutes, I will show you how easy it is to not only create a QR code for yourself on your iPhone, iPad and Mac using the built-in tools from Apple, but also how you can use this to not only link to any website, but also how to automatically insert your contact infos via a QR code on your business card or your signature and how to easily let your guests join a Wi-Fi without ever needing a password ever again using only a QR code. And also how to start any app or shortcut on your Apple devices using a QR code. All of this is done easy and effortlessly with just three quick actions using the Apple Shortcuts app. If you want to find out how it is done, stick with me. QR codes are everywhere. Nearly all stores and brands are now using them to make you visit their websites, Instagram accounts, etc. Also, during the pandemic, we've seen this come up for lots of services like booking a COVID test, registering a visit in a hospital, or even getting the menu in a restaurant. So, turning a web link into a QR code is something we've all experienced in the last years. But do you know that there are lots of cool automation possibilities with QR codes and that creating these on your Apple devices are free and easy. You won't even need a third-party app or website, which is great for your privacy. Everything you need to create amazing QR code is already included in your iPhone, iPad or Mac. So let me show you first how you can create a simple QR code generator with no programming skills using only three actions. Then I will show you three great examples what you can do with it besides opening up web pages. So let's get to it. Creating your own QR code is easy on your Apple devices. You don't even need an app for that. It is all built in. All you need is the Shortcuts app. By the way, all of the shortcuts will be linked to in the description below. So let's start with creating a general QR code generator shortcut. A general QR shortcut only needs three actions. First, you enter the text you want to turn into a QR code. This can be any kind of text, but Mostly it is used with web links, so if you want to turn the link into a QR code, you first get the link. Second, the second action turns this into a QR code. Third, the third action shows the QR code. Done. It is that easy. I promise you that this will be easy, right? So let's build this in the Shortcuts app. Create a new shortcut and give it a name. I call it Generate QR Code. I'm using the iPad app here, but you can just as easily do this on the Mac or iPhone. These shortcuts will work on all three platforms. Next. You need to select on the right side the actions you want to use. We select the ask action, type in ask in the search box and click on ask for input. You leave it at ask for text, which is the type you want to enter. And after the with, you enter the prompt. I'll use enter text for QR code here. The next action you select from the actions menu is generate QR code. Just type QR code in the search box and click on generate QR code. Notice that it will automatically connect this to the previous statement indicated by the thin line, and it is shown that this step will generate a QR code from the provided input, which is just what we wanted. Third, the last step is to show the QR code. Type show result in the search box to the right and select the show result action. Again, it will connect to the previous action and it will select the QR code as the result it will show. Done. That was easy, right? Leave it the shortcut and now you can use it by tapping on the shortcut in the old shortcuts pane. It will ask for text and you can enter anything here. But obviously QR codes are most often used for links to web pages. So let's enter one. I'm pasting the link to my YouTube page. It will then create and show the QR code. Now I can either get another device like an iPhone and use the camera to select a QR code, which will immediately bring me to my YouTube page. But I can also do this on the device itself by tapping on the QR code, which opens it up as an image. Then long press on the image and select open in Safari. You will not see any changes, but press done to get out of the image and done again to close the shortcut. And then you will see that Safari went to that page. By the way, you can also in the image, save the image or bring it to another app. But there are way more things you can do with QR codes than just visiting websites. You can put your complete address infos as a V card into a QR code. Let me show you how. First, Let's not ask for text this time, but just enter a text action. Select the text action first, but leave it empty for now. Second, again, at the generate QR code action. And third, with the last step, you can do show results again. Now, all we have to do is to create the V card in the text action. It starts with begin V card and ends with end V card. 
In the second line, you should add the version number, which I enter as version double colon 4.0. Now you enter all your contact infos. An overview of the fields or properties you can use, you will find at the Wikipedia article about the vCard protocol, which I'll also link in the description. There is an example which you can use and underneath this in the table there are all the properties you can use with examples. So let's use the example of Simon Perrault from the Wikipedia article and add some information. As you see, the full name is already here using the fn property. The name fields including prefixes and suffixes are entered using the n property. Next line is the birthday property where the year is not given, only month and day. Next the gender and then the work email address. So let's add a phone number. I can use the example from the website to add a cellular number. Now if I run this shortcut, it will create a QR code which will automatically insert the contact into the address book. You could save this as an image and put it on your business card or add it to your signature. Quite convenient, right? By the way, if you want to create the QR code a bit smaller, you can add one action. Type in resize image and add the action between the generate QR action and the show action by dragging it in between those actions. You can then add the size. I'll go for 100 here. We can use the same shortcut structure for joining a Wi-Fi. This makes sense if you want your guests to join a Wi-Fi without them having to enter a password. The only thing we need to change from the previous example is the text action. The text we need to enter is this one. The properties used here are T for transmission, you can enter WPA or WEP or no pass, S for SSID, this is the name of the network and spaces are allowed here, P for password and there is a fourth not used property here which is hidden. You can set this to true if your Wi-Fi is hidden and then you can still connect to it. Since you need to enter the password here, it can be viewed by anybody who has the QR code. This is a convenience but no security measure. So you don't have to disclose your password but it can be just as easily read from the QR code using an app. Therefore I would only use this in case of a guest Wi-Fi where I would have no problem for guests to know the password anyway. So let me create this for my Wi-Fi and see how it works. Boom! Connected. By the way, this works on all platforms, so you can also give this QR code to a person using an Android phone. The last example is for those who would use QR codes to automate their Apple ecosystem. Since shortcuts run on all platforms, you can also start any shortcut using a QR code. The syntax you need for the text action is this. Obviously, this will only trigger a shortcut if you have it already on your phone or iPad or Mac. But it might be useful for you to have this triggered on a specific location where you put up this QR code as a trigger. So as you can see, the shortcut app is amazing and creating QR codes for all kinds of things is fun and easy. I hope you learned something new today. If you like this kind of content, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel if you would like to know when my next video comes up. And if you are into optimizing your mail workflow, you need to know about this one setting in Apple Mail, which is off by default and which will drastically improve your productivity using Apple Mail on the iPhone or iPad. Check it out here. So see you next time. Bye.